Sir, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you. Yeah, another two minutes, sir. I think we are playing the video now. So we are live now. So okay, ma'am. I'll uh, switch off my video. Uh, no, sir. Let the video be camera. there. Let it I mean, be there. Uh, I'll let you. Cause some bandwidth problems. So yeah. what I'll do is while I'm sharing my screen, I'll uh, switch on. Uh, once I share my screen, then I'll switch off my uh, video camera. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So good morning. Anika. Yes. Good morning. We have Professor Shekhar Verma, Professor. In the Department of Information Technology, Triple IT, Allahabad, sir has sir is focused in the areas of pattern recognition, and sir has uh, guided around 20 scholars, and sir has also worked on many projects. So today we have sir with us. So over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, and uh, I think you had wonderful uh, sessions in previous days. And uh, this is going to be a little deviation. I'll be talking of meta learning. And uh, this is something which has come up just one, two years back, but it's now in the mainstream of research. So without much ado, let me start assuming uh, that you had a wonderful session on deep learning. You have basics of AI ready. So, and you know machine learning. So assuming that you know everything, <laughs> I'll tell you something which may not or may not be really uh, uh, really be understood in its entirety. However, let's start. Yes. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll share my screen. It's a PDF. And then as soon as I do it, so I'll be talking about meta learning and yes. So So meta learning, as we know, is something that we also always want in life and we have always been doing. And what we have been doing is learning one thing and applying that particular information to do something else. For example, right in your childhood or in my childhood, I was asked by my parents, my sister, my elder brothers, all to learn how to ride a cycle. Once I ride my bicycle, then tomorrow, without much training, I can ride a bike, I can ride a car or drive a car, or rather I can even go and say that I can pilot an aeroplane. What is there in our human mind and what kind of training it's there that we can do this? How can we really apply our experience, which has been learned in one situation, and use it without much of training in some other situation? So this is what is machine learning. And this particular branch of machine learning is what is known as meta learning. So let's see what are the paradigms which are already there in machine learning. 
So let's take the example of supervised learning. Though it can be unsupervised learning or it can be reinforcement learning or anything. So what is supervised learning? So we learn and we have a large amount of diverse data. And from this diverse data, we start learning. It's like learning from a teacher. The teacher tells us what is right and what is wrong. And if you do something which is wrong, the teacher not only tells you that's wrong, but also tells you what is the right path or what is correct. So this is supervised learning. But then what do you want in supervised learning to be able to learn? We want a large, diverse set data. And if we have a large, diverse set of data, then we can generalize. And what is generalization? Generalization is what is learning. So we learn. That means we are able to generalize. That means if we are able to recognize one picture, you will be able to recognize another picture of the same genre. When we say same genre, that just means it comes from the same PDF. So one class of images, once you learn, then if you are shown another image which are close, then in that case, you'll be in a position to recognize. So we have a large, diverse training data. And when we have a large, diverse training data, then we are able to learn and hence then use this particular experience to generalize. But then what I have learned is to bicycle. What I have learned is to drive a two-wheeler. Can I use this particular knowledge or experience to drive a mobile? But the problem is that we don't have a lot of time, a lot of instances, a lot of time to learn how to drive a mobile. But we find very interestingly that if I see, if I do a task like bicycling, then I'm able to switch to a mobile in a matter of minutes. So we don't require retraining from scratch. And we are able to transfer our previous knowledge into a new setting with very few and in some cases without any previous exposure of the new set of task. Similar things happens here also. You have learned how to pay, play tennis you start playing badminton. You learn how to play cricket. You are able to transfer a lot of things into hockey. You learn how to cook paneer, shahi paneer. You are able to cook another vegetable. And you don't require a lot of time for doing so. Why? So what is, the, what is, what is there in this that we are able to transfer our experience from one learned experience to another without a lot of training comes into the ambit of what is known as meta learning. It comes in different flavors with slight variations called transfer learning, auto machine learning. But with our, we are not going to definitions. We say that this comes into the large within the beneath the large umbrella of what is known as meta learning. And in meta learning, what we don't have, we don't have large data sets. We have only few instances and we wish to make reasonable generalization using our previously learned supervised learning experience and then fine tune it to learn something new with very small data instances or data sets. So welcome to the world of meta learning. So instead of trying to learn from data, we try to learn from information, or we say we are trying to learn to learn. So instead of learning, we want to learn to learn. How do we learn things? We want to learn that. And let's see what are the problems. So the problem is that we have a lot, lot of data. Suppose there is a self-driving car. We have a lot of data for regular driving, but suppose, we have made the driver in a reinforcement learning paradigm 
the auto driver learns how to drive when everybody is behaving well but all of a sudden a child runs onto the road then what happens he must be able to adapt this without any further learning he must be able to take the right action with without any training he does not he has not seen this instance before but he should be able to take the right action this is what is known as zero shot learning so what happens most of the time if you look at the graph most of the time we have a lot of data points but the big data actually lies in most common instances the boring instances and we have very small data in those instances which are really not there so now we want so let's take an example so we as you can see we have two paintings two set of paintings from two different painters very famous most of us may not have seen them because they are not indian so we have brock on the left hand side and in the second column we have from cesar and then the question is looking at this particular test data point on the right hand side of your screens can you tell who painted it it's by brock by cesar but then to the human mind it does not require any training it does not require any retraining or retooling or reskilling it automatically says it's from brock and probably we can explain also or we may not be in a position to explain why are we doing this but we are able to take a correct decision can we make the machine learn from your previous experience can machine accomplish the same thing from by transferring its previous experience what was the previous experience friends the previous experience was the training data from brock and sisan when we have a new data test point we have to we have not learned how to differentiate between the two painters but looking at the test data point looking at a we have some intuitive transfer of learning and we are able to accomplish this task of recognizing the painting whether it's from the first painter or the second painter so let's see how machine learning has been progressing how how do you really make the machine accomplish this task see initially when we started doing machine learning we used to have and still have a lot of handcrafted features if i wish to recognize for example a face then i'll have to give what are you have to find out what are the edges what are the other features if i wish to do find out do any classification using svm or for that matter if we wish to use decision trees or random forest we must have all the hand crafted features we must be in a position to use some algorithm to find out what are the features that is the attributes and once we have the attributes then we process that attribute we can do dimensionality reduction followed by classification or some clustering or we can do clustering the high dimensional space itself but we must get these features using some feature extraction technique or some using some hand crafting as time went by uh, we had deep learning and deep learning is pervading everything for more reasons than one this enormous success can be attributed to its high accuracy but there is something which is lurking behind which is making it more and more popular is that you don't need hand crafted features you throw a raw image you throw a raw video and it extracts the image by itself it extracts the features you don't need it need to give it the features hello this is edge this is the lip this is the eye this is where the hairline is there no we don't need to give either low level features like edges or high level features like presence of eye or presence of ear or presence of eyebrow no it extracts those features by itself and if you look at a convolutional neural network you will find that different stages are able to extract different levels of these features but then what we want is this particular deep learning architectures that we have what we want is that can they transfer their learning from one domain to another domain 
can be explicitly learned priors from previous experience and then use these priors to learn something using very few or no additional instances in short can we learn to learn so meta learning says that we have we can learn to learn and learning how to learn is a learning paradigm or meta learning is a learning paradigm that can learn information from one task and generalize that information to learn unseen tasks and that too in a very proficient manner that is if you are able to classify images into dogs and cats and have a differentiate between a bicycle and an animal tomorrow if you have slightly difference different problem thrown at you saying that can you differentiate between animals and mobiles or from human beings to animals can we do that can we use our learned experience can we in short learn to learn so what are the key questions first why do we need meta learning at all we have deep learning is there a sounding success do we need meta learning can we really cast this meta learning if at all into a mathematical framework so for easy understanding of that so that we can really develop different architectures different paradigms machine meta learning and in doing so what are the different approaches till date and the subject is still young to design a meta learning algorithm so where where did we really start thinking about this we said okay since deep neural networks like cnn lstm gan variational networks auto encoders variational auto encoders they all can handle unstructured data that means they are able to extract features and these features need not be engineered or crafted by hand and they are able to generalize very well can these deep neural networks help us transfer my knowledge to some other knowledge let's see why because we found that these deep neural networks are data hungry they require a deluge or a flood of data to be able to learn but we know that for example in language learning the corpus of english is huge however as nlp people are going to tell you the corpus for our vernacular languages for example starting from hindi to telugu to kannad to tamil the corpus is not really developed and right from there learning those languages which are rarer for example as we want wish to learn some vedic indic script then we are in a soup why because we don't have sufficient data to make a deep neural network learn so since large data sets are unavailable and even when we have large data available the rare there is a class imbalance we have a lot of data for banal events there is hardly any data for rare events so when you have patient data you have a lot of data for people who are healthy you have a lot of data for common diseases but we don't have data for rare diseases so supervised learning on a class imbalance data is a problem because we are not able to generalize let's see in an rl setting in a reinforcement network setting an autonomous vehicle can be tra trained to handle the mundane everyday traffic the traffic lights keep to your left lane changing all these things it can easily learn and handle but it struggles when for example an animal start crossing the road people start misbehaving on the road people don't see the zebra crossing to cross and start jaywalking so what happens that in these cases it has been found 
that deep neural networks start misbehaving and can lead to bad situations. Why? Because you have don't have data or the data is has a class imbalance and does not is not does not have sufficient data to learn these rare events. Say if you say why don't we collect data for rare events? No, but we can we can have situations which have we have not seen because a particular uh, autonomous learning uh, driver learned in uh, some uh, some country may not be able to understand the Indian traffic. May not be able to understand the Indian paradigm if a person is walking on the road reading a newspaper. This cannot be really worked out. This is always the rarest of the rare event. So what we want, we want to quickly learn about a new task. How quickly? From zero instances to a few instances. And we don't want to learn from scratch. I, as human beings, we can transfer our prior experience. So if I know one language, if you know one language, then probably learning the other language is very, very easy. Why? Because they are similar linguistically. This similarity, which says that the data may be drawn from the same PDF, is can be exploited and can be used as we human beings use to transfer our learning or we can learn to learn. So it's nothing but meta learning. For example, on your screen, you find that human beings, when they say, see a demo, are able to learn very quickly and infer a policy. Can a robot can see a human being lifting a cup can really infer the policy which can be seen by seeing a human being work. If this were possible, if this is work or something which is possible, then you don't have to make the uh, collect data. We can just have human being demonstrate to the report and then using this demonstration and using this previous learning, the robot can learn new events or can learn or infer a new policy. This is the grand goal of meta learning and meta reinforcement learning. Though we are just taking baby steps, and I believe the, we are very, very in a very, very infancy stage. The research just started some two, three years back. Really, really, we are trying to take off. So let's see what is the framework of meta learning. And friends, this particular framework of Meta learning because the vocabulary is changing. Hello, hello, yes, sir, it's audible, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, ma'am. It's audible, sir. Achha, should I? Uh, oh, okay. Should I continue, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Ha, no. You have to share the PPT, sir. Okay, ma'am. I'll do it in a minute. I think I've shared something else. Okay, something gone wrong. Let me it, it, give me a minute. I think something went wrong. Is it uh, visible, ma'am? Now? Not yet, sir. Is it? Okay, okay. I'll uh, just try to do that. Okay. Just a moment now. Okay, 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 okay. Not move. 
Hello, ma'am. Are you able to hear me? Yes, I'm Hello. able to hear you, sir. Okay. Share and then share something. Share, 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 share. Yes. Is it clear now, ma'am? Are you getting my this thing? Are you getting yes, my sir. my the PPT, ma'am? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll enter into a full screen. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Should I continue? Yes, sir. So audio is there, video may not be there. Ha, huh. audio is there, sir. Video is not there. PPT okay. is visible. We yes. can continue. So I'll go on. Yes, ma'am. So the idea is let's start and see this. We want to move and see how supervised learning is different from meta learning. And you'll have to bear with me because we are trying to develop a very, very simple framework for supervised learning. So if you have a bit of maths, very confusing framework, mathematical framework, because it's just evolving. If you go through different research or different research publications, you may just see that there is a shift in the vocabulary. So the vocabulary might be a little confusing, but at the end of the day, I hope everything will fall in line. So let's start. So we have standard supervised learning. And what is standard supervised learning what we want? We want to maximize the likelihood of the model parameters. So let's see. Now, this is something which uh, those who are not really familiar with supervised learning will say, what is this? So the idea is that in supervised learning, we have training data where we have data drawn from a particular PDF. We assume that nature is is giving us this data, which is governed by some probability distribution function. We have labels. And our aim is to find out this particular PDF. With some abuse of vocabulary, what I'm going to say is that we assume, usually assume the functional form of this PDF and then try to find out the parameters. For example, if you have speech data, we can assume that this PDF is a Laplacian PDF and then we try to find out the parameters of this particular PDF. It's not always necessary that we assume a parametric form. We also have non-parametric learning in which we do not assume anything. But for now, let's say that we want, we know that there is some data being produced by some function and we assume a functional form of that particular function, the parameters, and we want to learn the parameters. And what do you mean by learning the parameters? Learning the parameters is simply saying that given the data, what is the maximum likelihood of those parameters? So the parameters here is the phi and the data is D. Given the data, what parameters of that particular function or the PDF is generating this data? This, data. this is what we want to maximize. And this is what is known as a posterior distribution. Now, this posterior distribution, as we know, using Bayes' theorem, can be defined or can be seen as sum of two things. And we don't just take the likelihood, we take the log like uh, posterior distribution. So it can be broken into two parts or decomposed into two parts. First is what is known as the likelihood, where we say that we have data and we say, seeing this data, what parameters would have produced this data? What is the likelihood that this data would have been produced by this particular set of parameters? This is what we know as the likelihood function. Plus, we have a regularizer term, which is known as prior. And what we wanted to learn, as you saw in equation one here on your screen, is we wanted to find out that given the data, what are the parameters? What are the most likely parameters? Now, this equation two can then be again be broken because we are learning. So we have the learning training data and we start using this training data to learn the first term, which is the likelihood term. The second term is what is our prior experience, which is subjective. For example, when we go to a college and we try to make friends, then what happens is 
initially somebody has told me that these people are good they'll be good friends so this is my p5 this is my prior and then as i interact more and more with my friends or my uh, other friends or other people i find that not no no not these but some other persons are good for my friendship they gel with me more so what happens is initially the prior or the regularizer become important and with more and more amount of data the left hand side of the likelihood becomes more important so this likelihood is actually like a regularizer we don't see the first friend who is very pleasant and start making friends because somebody has told me told me no no those who are very pleasant may not be the best of friends so initially the prior p5 starts uh, acting like more of a regularizer but with time we mo- learn more from data but if you have a lot of lot of data then we cannot generalize we overfit and that is something which is a problem of supervised learning so what is key problem suppose we want we have some more data and the data is being drawn from the same function but the instances are different and the problem is if we have d- more data do we need to learn from scratch once again this is the key problem that supervised meta learning tries to solve that is when you have learned from massive amount of data now we have some more data drawn from the same pdf but with different uh, now i don't want to uh, differentiate and find what are friends i want to find those who are not friends or those who are foes foes then do we learn from scratch meta meta learning says no we can learn with a few instances or no instances at all so this is the meta learning setup and i'll be using this multiple number of times and be very very careful see we have on the top meta learning or meta training set the meta training set is a set of different tasks we say multitask environment why because when you want to learn how to uh, ride a mobike then you learn if you have already learned cycling you learn how you, know, you learn something from cycling you learn something from your toy car you learn something from making your uh, uh, using your mobile so you are actually taking or bringing your experience from different tasks governed by the same pdf mind you so we have meta training which is nothing but a set of data sets so for example here we have seen there are lot of data sets which are known as meta training which we have in large quantities so we have a lot of d trains or d meta trains each with their d train and d test and then we have only a few instances of meta test that these are the new data that we have not seen before and we have some d test as you can see this particular d test or d meta test this is not there and this is different and this is has very few data instances as compared to the d meta train so d meta train i repeat is the tasks or is the training sets which are available in plenty and each meta training set is divided into d train and d test training for making the machine learn and there are diverse sets of these meta trains and once we are able to tune this particular parameters then given this new meta test can we change this meta learning parameters so that they can learn the new task with a very very few instances i again understand that we have a little little confusion but it will become clear as we go by so what we are saying is that the bike which we are learning or we wish to learn is actually the meta test the bicycle which we have learned the car which we have learned the toy car which we have learned all or different tricycle that we have learned is all and all in the meta training set and what 
we have done in the meta training set we have already learnt some parameters say those parameters are known as theta parameters so we have learnt the thetas and what we want now is we want this theta which we have learnt to be able to make us know or can we tune this theta which is a parameter which is there suited for large amount of data so that this theta can be changed slightly when we see a small amount of new data that means not uh, we have seen a lot of cycling i've done a lot of cycling so i know what is my theta how to balance how to ride how to do this how to do that on a bicycle but very few instances of mo bike in a few minutes can i tune this theta which is now a meta parameter so that i can ride a mo bike as proficiently as we were riding a cycle so we want to make a meta learning framework and that's what we are trying to do so we have theta which are the meta parameters which corres corresponding to the training which we have already had that is bicycles i want to learn some new parameters theta star and there is some phi which is which is the tuning parameter so when i say new data instances that means i am learning phi and i am also changing my previous parameters theta to be able to uh, to allow me to generalize for the new data so this is still confusing but let's see we have theta which we have learned from our previous task we want to fine tune this theta which is the meta parameter now when we see a few new instances of the data and and simultaneously we want to learn a new set of phis which are tuning parameters which will help us classify the test data so now we say what we are trying to do we have uh, the necessary information about d day the uh, dmeta train and then now we have new tasks and the new task is parameterized by a tuning parameter phi and thus the work that we need to do is we want to learn a new parameter phi which is the tuning parameter given the d train which is a lot of data plus some new data which is d we'll return uh, to this one over and over again so that it becomes clear to you as to what we are trying to do so mathematically speaking this meta parameters which were came by learning the lot of data that is the bicycle data is an intermediate variable or parameter is theta and what we want to learn with small amount of new data is what is phi and hence the meta learning is something in which we try to maximize we try to find out the tuning parameters phi and we wish to maximize that given the meta training parameters which we got from a meta training set which was a lot of data that is a bicycle data phi is a tuning parameter which sees only which we need to tune and find by seeing only a few instances of mobile riding forgive me for using rl terms but that becomes a little more clear to us when we use meta rl terms rather than uh, using some example from images so what is what mathematically saying how what are we trying to do so we are trying to fi find out p5 we want to find out the meta param uh, the the new parameters or the tuning parameters phi given the old parameters given the old data sets given the new data but however so if you see if you look at this in the right hand side this particular learning needs to be done or marginalized over all the previous meta parameters and this will give us a total pdf or probability distribution function of the tuning parameter phi but we don't want this what we want is we want to learn only mo bike we don't want to learn a lot of new tasks so we what we want is a point estimate 
We don't really need to find out the PDF. And hence, we say that we are not really bothered about finding out the complete PDF of Phi, but we want to learn only the Mobike from the few instances. So we do a little bit of approximation, mathematical approximation in which we can interchange between the log and the integral. So we marginalize over theta. So what happens? So now, if you look at the equation, the equation is that we have to marginalize over the entire theta because we know theta and we want to fine tune phi, this new, new, new parameter, meta parameter, tuning parameter phi over all theta. But theta we have discrete. So we use a mathematical jugglery and say, okay, those we are going to change the meta parameters also slightly so that we are able to interchange between integral and log and what results is this. Let's not go into the nitty gritties of maths, but remember what is happening is that while you are, you have learned, for example, how to bicycle, when you start learning how to drive a mobike, then those parameters which were there for the bike also, which were theta, were also certainly fine tuned so this fine tuning of your bicycle parameters for mobike affects your bicycling also. So this is minorly minor change of tuning of the bicycling parameters which are theta. In the wake of new very small amount of data which is d, and what we want is we also see that the first first uh, first first term in the equation is what is known as adaptation the second is what is known as meta training so let's see what is adaptation adaptation is that we collect mobile specific parameters that is new task specific parameters and assuming that it has the access to both d and the meta parameters theta i repeat and you'll be able to understand this friends this meta train, that means we have been learning bicycle for so many years. This data is no longer with us. What is there are the parameters. Once we have learned how to bicycle, we don't need to remember how we learned or the data or the practice that we have learned. We have learned, we, have, we know theta now. We do not need to retain this data. So what we need are the meta parameters theta and the new task and this finding out the tuning parameters phi from the new data instances about mobile along with the meta parameters is what is known as adaptation. And the second term as you can see is the meta training task collects this meta training parameters and this meta training part adapts the you have initially have chosen some random theta and this meta learning of using large amount of data we develop the the, the parameters or tune this theta according to the new task so we are tuning the theta to become theta star because your parameters are tuned towards the new task that of mobile king and you also have fine tuned parameters phi so there are two parameters fine tuning parameters phi and the main task is to fine tune the old meta parameters of the cycle to suit to bicycle to mobile sorry so to sum up the meta learning paradigm can be broken into two phases the first phase is the adaptation phase in which we try to find out the fine tuning parameters when we see new data and we have already learned how to bike, how to cycle, sorry. And then in the second phase, we even adapt our bicycling parameters when we see new data. So let's see what we are trying to do. We are having large amount of bicycling data, mobile, uh, sorry, uh, toy car, mobile, all these balancing, etc., are diverse tasks which are known as deep meta train. So, deep meta train 
allows you to take a lot of data different kinds of task which are from the same probability distribution function which are known as de meter train and each de meter train has different diverse sets say for example they have some t different or n different sets and every n different sets have different tasks so you will learn some diverse tasks from saying say learning how to uh, cycle in different types of cycles to tricycle to learning your mobile to learning your balancing learning to walk and then what happens is you have new task you have a new task in which you adapt and find out some new parameters phi and you also fine tune your old bicycling parameters which are known as theta star so in the adaptation phase we infer a set of task specific parameters which are phi star which are specific to bicycling and we also fine tune we also fine tune theta so in the adaptation phase what happens we are finding phi using the meta data more meta parameters of cycling etc etc and the new small set of data that we have about experience about mobile and in the second phase we also have we are fine tuning our old bicycling parameters which are theta so now we have some inkling of what is happening what is happening friends is in our own daily life setting we go and look at different kinds of sceneries different kinds of images we see different kinds of animals now we see an animal which we have not seen before and we are able to tell okay this is an animal which we have not seen before fine we put even put a name to it that this is a uh, this is a particular animal which is half tiger half lion so we call it tiglon or we call it tiglon or we call it liger we are able to differentiate that this is not something which we have seen so this particular thing is phi that means we are finding out parameters for the new specific task but we are also modifying our theta which was our deep our recognition for other animals and we are adapting it and fine tuning it for this to adopt and adapt to this new task and incorporate this new liger or tigon tiglon as well which is a cross between a tiger and a lion we are including it that in that animal set this is fine tuning of theta which becomes theta star now this is just something that means the d is a new task as you can see on your screens which is used in a sequential manner the first instance is given the first instance of liger that you saw which is a uh, which is a cross between a tiger and lion then second instance you saw the third instance you saw so only in three instances you are able to recognize and learn that this is something which is new so the meta parameter theta which was for recognizing animals has been updated and what is the output of this the output of this is a task specific parameter of recognizing the liger lion tiger hybrid so now if you only after seeing one two or three instances of this liger if you see a new instance of this liger you will be able to say okay this is liger or if you have some other thing which you have not seen only with three instances or two instances or without seeing it even a single instance which is zero shot learning we are in a position to classify it and recognize that is different from whatever we had seen in our lives so for example friends we never saw and never had come to a situation of covid or corona but with the few instances human beings quickly adapted start started doing social distancing staying within house and our behavior changed because by adapting only with a few instances only by looking at the newspaper looking at very few instances 
we have been able to adapt our old behavior what is that adapting our old behavior incorporating that into our behavior is changing theta to theta star and behavior specific towards covid or corona is what is phi so phi is the task specific fine tune parameters theta star is incorporating the new situation and making it a part of our experience now what happens is that how to the question is how to really incorporate this how to really incorporate this in our daily life and not in our daily life friends how to really make a machine learning algorithm out of it so let's see at this so mathematically speaking the first if you look at the top and look my look at my mouse then you see the first is the meta learning in which when you you are trying to maximize the probability of theta given d train and then adapt finding out the fine tune tune parameters phi star when we look at new data so what is so look at the right hand side we have d, uh, d meta train which is on the second hand which is a set of diverse known tasks so ample amount of training instances which is broken into training and test and then we have this d which is limited amount of some k instances which may be one shot two shot or three shot learning depending on the value of k which gives us task specific parameters phi then the question is we have made something on 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 this particular so what is this set of blocks here and what are these set of blocks here the set of blocks that we have here friends is nothing but neural networks so when we look at these follow my mouse these blocks in which we have inputs can be something which is able to learn a time series because we are giving these meta tasks one by one so this can be a recurrent neural network if you look at the mana so this is one type of deep learning network preferably a, a recurrent neural network or an lstm or a hop field net something of that sort so this is nothing but an lstm long short term memory and this particular input this particular block on the right would be another neural network preferably a convolutional net, neural network the input to the lstm and the lstm is trained by each instance of the new task the s1 we have input x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 and then this lstm is made to learn using back propagation in time once it has learned it will give you the theta star parameters it will output and spit out a fine tune parameters phi this particular fine tune parameter together with the test parameter can be fed into the neural networks say a cnn to train with a very few instances of this d to learn a new task so as you can see this particular left hand side the sequential boxes can be lstm which can be made to learn and fine tune the meta parameter theta star and spit out a fine tune parameter which is task specific to this new data and then as soon as we give a new data this uh, five star can be used in conjunction using a neural network and this is also a deep learning framework to spit out an output when you look at the whole thing then we look at a probabilistic explanation of this the probabilistic explanation is easy to understand difficult to implement but let's see what we are trying to do so now what is happening if you look at the whole thing and you look at the figure on the right hand side below this theta acts like a meta parameter so this theta is a meta parameter which we have learned from different tasks and this finding out the task specific parameters phi is what is learning to learn these meta parameters 
theta star which we learned from the test and the meta training set can be used to and utilized to learn phi from very few instances of the data and then something which is not observed at the meta test time is the t test and the, uh, the output and this particular output can and this particular phi i which are task specific or specific to new tasks can be learned very very quickly so this as we learned what we have learned and which has become our experience is actually the meta parameters when we see something new we tune our meta parameters according to the new task and which can help us give a new set of task specific parameters which are phi i friends i hope the vocabulary is clear to you and the the probabilistic idea is also clear to you that in meta learning first we tune the already known parameters to spit out some meta parameters or meta parameters theta star which are fine tuned for the new task and then we find out a fine tuned parameters which is task specific using the new data instances which are very less you are using this meta parameter so what is meta parameter again meta parameters are something especially meta parameters theta star are something which is the common denominator of all tasks which we have seen i repeat this is true generalization we have learned how to recognize dogs we have learned how to recognize uh, ca cattle we have learned to how to recognize cats we have learned how to recognize some other animal some other animal elephant etc etc so now this theta star that we have is a common generalization over all these tasks now you are given a new task see you see a liger or you see a animal which you have not seen before so you are able to say that this is an animal and then in a very few instances you are able to learn this new animal so this new animal now requires fine tuning of theta star as well and outputting of a task specific recognition of this new animal say a cross between a lion and a tiger say a liger and this is what is phi star so we have two parameters one is a meta learning parameter optimal which requires fine tuning which is theta star another is the adaptation to the task specific new task at hand which is nothing but phi but why are we seeing all these things we are seeing all these things because we say that a neural network or a deep learning network can be a good way of approximating a function so some more again some same thing we say that these different tasks if you look at are all coming from the same pdf all of them are animals they are divided into training meta training and meta learning and meta testing then we have a new set of tasks which you look at the bottom then this is known as meta testing which is broken into the new tasks which are known as support set vocabulary again my friends so the meta testing which is a new instance for example uh, recognition of a liger then in that case we have some new instances and then we have a new set of tests which are known as meta test and together to avoid confusion the new tests new set that we recognize or find is called a support set and this is called the query set so what happens let's again see the framework is that in the framework we have to learn we have diverse set of tasks ti which have been drawn from the same pdf and as you can see there are different words right from training data we have some portraits we have some uh, some sky we have some animals we have some pottery we have some something else and we are learning the neural network making the neural network learn from these diverse tasks when we learn these diverse tasks we learn the meta parameter theta when we test it we learn and adapt it to learn the common factor or the common set of parameters which is the generalization which is theta star 
now with a very few instances of the support set or the new data we are able to find out phi which is a task specific parameter so this frame that means as we learn when we have learned something and we'll see something new not only we learn something the parameters about the new task friends we also fine tune our understanding of the old task so theta star is a generalization which is a meta parameter as you can see meta parameter for the task specific parameters phi for the new and with a very few instances we are able to adapt to new tasks so for example we know english but if you have very very few instances of these characters and this my friend again are what is known as omni omniglot data which as you can see we have only 623 characters from 50 different al alphabets we have only few instances from hebrew we have very few instances from bangla we have very few instances from greek we have very few instances of other languages we are just 20 each but then and there are 50 different alphabets and devanagari is also there or other scripts are also there so but look at mnist it's a huge huge data set containing different kinds of numbers so the question is something can be learned on mnist data set which is huge can we make them recognize these different characters so these are the meta sets these 623 characters from 50 different alphabets are the meta data or the support data and the query data what is the meta training the meta training is learning for example english which is huge learning from mnist which is huge and then with a very few shots we can learn these different alphabets so again looking at the images we have meta training t1 t2 t3 which is lot of data we test them we have testing uh, this training classes are testing uh, which are made to fine tune on theta which is in meta learning theta then friends we have only 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 one example of different classes we have five new classes and we have just one example of each and this is the meta test or this is the support set and on the right hand side when you look at a tiger and a pot pottery they are the query set only with one example of five sets on a neural network which has learned these huge training data sets can be classified in examples if you can do it and these new examples are known as query sets the instances only one instance of five classes what is known as support set and this are known as held out classes so can we learn on mnist or english characters and learn my friends how to recognize bangla only with a few instances can we learn how to play chess and apply it on some others can we learn how to ride a mobile having learned bicycle or having learned different types of bicycling with a diverse set of tasks i am ready to learn any new car or any new gadget having learned how to uh, how to how to work on my mobile i am able to work on a new mobile very very easily and this image is not just image classification we can generate new music we can do regression we can do skill learning we can do pretty much any meta learning problem using this meta learning algorithm so the now the question is how do we really design a meta learning algorithm so we say that what we wanted to learn we wanted to learn the probability of phi i given the new data and given the meta parameters which we have learned from previous data so friends if you look at this particular expression p phi i given the di tr and the meta parameters theta can we see it as an inference problem so if we in such in somehow 
can model the first line p phi i given d i s t s training gamma theta and the parameters if this can be modeled as a function and these theta can be learned from old tasks then our work is done and we say and try to just observe and reflect back what is a neural network my friends when people started thinking of this they found that neural network is nothing but a function it's a boolean circuit you give something input it gives you some it spits out something which is output so it is nothing the circuit or the neural network is nothing but a function it is embodying a function it's like y is equal to mx plus c is straight line it can be y is equal to x square or it can be a very complicated non linear function but still it's a function and the parameters of this function are have been learned from the large amount of meta training tests and varied kind of experience means we have made it to learn on varied data sets so this is a generalizer or a function and this function can be modeled as a neural network and this gives us what is known as the mechanistic view of learning in which a deep neural network can be used to model this particular p theta p phi i phi sub i given the new training data and the meta parameters and this particular neural network we take a huge cnn for example we take make it learn from the large amount of data so it has learned theta now now this theta can act as a prior and make us learn when we see something new then quickly we can use this theta meta parameters to fine tune these meta parameters to get theta phi and we can have a second network which can spit out the task specific parameters which are phi i which is nothing but another neural network or an lstm so what is the deterministic view and we are not talking of the probabilistic view but we can say that our all meta training is like a prior it's something which has our experience and i we use our experience to take decision in new situations but today i'll be sticking to meta mechanistic view so come to the mechanistic view of meta learning which is uses deep neural networks so what is the deterministic view the deterministic view says that we have a new training data which is d train and we have a test point which is x test and we already have our own experience which has been there and we have already have theta that means where the theta come from the theta came from the meta training data and given the that we have already a learned neural network which had theta we have very small amount of data which is detrained and we want to make this neural network adapt to this new detrain with very few k shots your k is just 1 2 3 4 5 or something of that sort and when we give an input x test which is a new altogether a new input then we want to get a new output that means we are quickly able to adapt or generalize to a task which we have not seen before and where did we get this particular uh, 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 particular theta we get a particular theta from the d train the probabilistic view as i told you is nothing but using your experience or theta as or your previous data as your prior experience but we are not talking of that today we'll talk it out in some other instance or some other day so any deterministic or mechanistic view or probabilistic view has two phases remember one is the adaptation phase another is the meta training phase the first is when you fine tune or uh, output tasks or output parameters which are task specific or specific to the new task and meanwhile the what is theta theta is a generalization parameter 
which is generalization across multitask, multiple type of diverse experience that we had. And this is a diverse, ample amount of data, which is D-meta training data. So remember, the supervised learning actually is the meta training phase. And when are we generalizing? So we supervise, do supervised learning on each meta training data instance. And then at the test time of this D meta train, we generalize across tasks to give you theta star. And then when new instances are seen, we optimize theta and we also adapt and spit out a new task specific parameter specific to the new task, which is phi i. There are three different views. Let's see how much can we cover in half an hour, friends. There are three different views. One is known as the black box approach. Another one is known as the optimization based approach. And the third one is a non parametric approach. The black box approach uses a memory network. The optimization based approach tries to find out in which direction we need to move so as to adapt to a new task. And this direction is given by the gradient. The non parametric approach uses two neural networks, or two convolutional neural networks, which are known as CMEs, twins, to find out what is the distance between the new task and the old task, and how can we really find out and use a KNN type of approach to classify a new task. So let's see the black box approach. And now we are coming to some concrete approaches. And to, to, to recap, we say that we have a large amount of diverse multitasks, which are form what are known as meta training sets. We train the neural network on these meta training sets. At the Test time of these tests, we generalize to find theta, which is meta training. Then we use a small amount of data to find out phi. Remember now, friends, our major aim would be to find out theta star. Once we are able to generalize across tasks, then we just give inputs of the new uh, training set, which is nothing but D sub training, as you can see in the in the in the uh, here it is. So the aim is we have a neural network, which is usually an LSTM, in which we are giving data as x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Then making this LSTM, and what are the parameters of this LSTM? The parameters of this LSTM are theta, which will change to theta star. And when we give new data, it will give you an output, which is nothing but phi i. This phi i is used with the meta test data into another neural network. So this phi i plus this test data should be in a position to give you an output or a label of a new task, which you have not seen before. I repeat. So very easy. We start. And this particular right hand side is what is standard new supervised learning. Nothing special. The only thing special is the phi i. Where do you get phi i from? So this phi i, which is task specific parameter, is learned from the k instances, new instances that we have. And this theta is something which is already learned by a meta training data. So let's see. So what is the idea? The key idea is to train a neural network. And as I told you, a neural network is nothing but a function. So we have input, output. You give any input, you get some output. And that's a trained neural network. It is a generalized so example. It can represent a very complicated curve. It can represent a straight line. You give an input, the out x, the output is y is equal to mx plus c. You give an input as x, the output is x square, y is equal to x square. But a huge neural network or a CNN can model a very complicated function. And how does it learn this function? The parameters, for example, y is equal to mx plus c. m is a parameter, c is a parameter. 
This is learned from data. So we learn the parameters of the training uh, of the neural network from data. And we know that a deep neural network has billions of parameters. For example, a VGG Net 256 has a billion parameter which can be learned using a large amount of data. So you have a learned network. And this learned network has parameters which are theta. And the neural network itself represents this F theta. Now we give a few new instances, only three, four, not a very huge 10, 20 GB, 30 GB of training data. No, we have a very few instances of this new data. And what we have done, lo and behold, what we have done initially, we have sampled this huge data set, made the network learn. Then once it is learned, friends, then on one data set, the first data set it has learned, then we give our data. So in meta learning, we are learning the new task while you are learning the old task. While you are learning how to cycle, you are also learning how to bicycle. So you are adapting the bicycle also and adapting to the cycle also. So what we are doing is we take a sample task, make the neural network learn those parameters theta, then give one instance of the new data, the new data that we want to learn, the, the task which we have not seen. So it learns. So what, as you can see, the flow of the algorithm, we sample data test PI or a mini batch of tasks, sample disjoint uh, sets, and then compute the tuning parameter, the fine tuning parameter from using this function which we have already learned. As soon as we, uh, now what we have to do, you have to do two things. You have to find out the optimal phi and you have to also update theta to the new task. So there are two things simultaneously going on. In the inside loop, in the inside loop, we are updating our parameters. And for in the outside loop, we are giving our metadata. So we give one instance, we have learned some task, then we say, okay, this is a new task we have not seen. So now I uh, spit out a phi for it, but this phi is not optimal. We learn it using backpropagation algorithm. Then in meanwhile, a the theta also gets, because we are learning, making the whole network learn. So the theta also gets modified. Then what happens? You give another set of new tasks. So after learning, so there are two learnings going on. Learning of theta, learning of phi. Phi is task specific to the new task that you have given. Beta parameters are theta. So we, we update the meta parameters theta. We spit out phi, which is task specific, the new task specific. So what is theta? So this particular theta, which we have already learned, our one task of the other task of the other task is nothing but an LSTM because it can learn a time series or sequential set of tasks. So we give x1 by 1, then we give x2 by 2, then we give x3 by 3, x4 by 1. What should be the output? This, these TITR, which is the new task, should spit out task specific parameters phi i given the meta, meta parameters theta. So this is usually an LSTM or we also have some specific neural tu uh, tuning machines, etc., etc. But it's more, most of the time LSTM with an external memory. So what are we doing? We, my friends, are learning a function. And this function, which is what we are learning is task specific parameters given the new training data and the old meta, meta parameters theta. So what we do is we make a neural network, train the neural network. And given these theta, we don't want the old meta training. Once we have learned how to run, ride a bicycle, we don't need to remember the all the things that we did with the bicycle, how we fell, how we talked to our friends, how we took advice from our friends. All these are forgotten. What you have learned is to learn the, just to drive or ride the bicycle. So you would retain only theta, forget about all things. So we have F theta, which we, which has everything inside it, which is nothing but the theta. Now, 
the total number of parameters of this theta remember a vgg net 256 has a billion parameter do you want to remember all these billion parameters the answer is no so what we do we do dimensionality reduction and output an hi which is nothing but a low dimensional vector representing the entire theta so now if what we want to do is this phi i is a function of the theta and the new low dimensional features. So this is just an addition. If, in, if you don't have large number of field parameters, you don't need this low dimensional features hi. However, we take only the, for example, the mean, the variance, the third moment, the fourth moment. This is the sufficient statistics that we have. And using the old experience in this form of sufficient statistics and the theta specific to the new task, we are able to learn. So let's see it in a little bit of detail. So we use a neural network architecture to generalize the distribution of phi i, that is the fine tuning of parameters, given the new data and given the meta parameters. So the task specific parameters are phi i, which is a function of the old meta parameters and the new data that you have seen. And what we require, we require to model this. So the neural new, uh, neural network with the meta parameters is f theta, is the f theta that you can see is a model as an LSTM, my friends. And then it takes inputs. What are the inputs to this new inputs, so the new data, and they spit out the task specific parameters, which is the new task specific parameters. And then another neural network which uses these new task specific parameters to test and to give the output class of the test data. So the new data is divided into a learning set, which is just few instances and a test case. The old neural network, which has already learned, which is already learned, my friends, is, is what? The, we have old tasks, which we learn and learn as theta. Then once we have learned this as theta, we input the, the, the new task data, which fine tunes the theta and also gives you theta task specific parameters phi. This task specific parameters can be used in a neural network to give output when you have test of metadata. So what we have done, we have seen different animals learn a neural network, which is f theta. Then I see a liger. And I have only five instances of a liger or two instances of a liger, one instance of a tiger and a lion or some new animal. We train the network and modify theta. Then it gives a task liger specific parameters phi i. These tiger specific phi i are parameters of a new neural network, a evolutionary neural network, which can then be used for recognizing ligers. So this is what is a black box meta training mechanistic algorithm. A little tough, but remember this is how our brain works. How does our brain work, my friends? It sees old data, does not, uh, does not retain old data, but our brain synapses are all modified to hold all information. As soon as we get a new situation in life, we use this old situation with a very few instances, we know what is to be done in a new situation. And we also incorporate that new situation as a part of our old. But then task specific parameters are there. As soon as we face this new situation in some other situation now, again, sometime when we use this, uh, face this situation, we know what action to take. So if you are able to learn uh, this bicycle, this mobile, which you are uh, elder brother has given you for five minutes, you learn how to ride a bike in five minutes. That means given another bike after two friends from your friends, you'll be able to ride it. So this is a very, very natural way of meta training. That means you are able to have a memory, either LSTM or otherwise, able to store the function or the experience. And with new experience, we can quickly adapt so I'll just read it out. The old instances are all TIs. 
and the new instances, new data is TI, DI train and DI test. And phi i's are the task specific parameters which learn from the function f, which is modeled by an LSTM with parameters theta. We give new DI train only a few instances one by one. The training of the LSTM is done using back propagation and time algorithm as any LSTM is learned using gradient descent. And lo and behold, your neural network now is ready to predict from and has generalized to a new data set. Very simple and easy to understand. And this is uh, when the number of parameters are very large, then you don't remember all theta, but then you remember the low dimensional outputs only. So I'll just skip this. So this is very easy. The new new next time when you get a bicycle is when your you have already ridden your uh, uh, ridden your uh, your brother's mobile for five minutes and you already know how to ride a bicycle which is f theta your brother's mobile for five minutes is di train and when you get your friend's mobile which is x test you are able to ride your friend's mobile with ease and that is y test so this is the general form of black box approach. Friends are not going to test, but this is how it is. So this is the LSTM with an external memory. An external memory just is a content addressable memory, which is just storing all your previous experience. The new data is given x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. And this LSTM is learned, is learning as using back propagation. Anything which is familiar F theta is nothing but the external memory and you are able to use content addressable memory to recognize any overlap between your new riding mobile to riding your bicycle. I'll not stick with this because this is actually involved and you can read that the paper is memory augmented neural network and it was the first few papers which come, came out in meta learning. So, but I'll talk about very interesting, another five, 10 minutes, I'll be talking something which is very, very interesting. And this is what is known as optimization based meta training. This is an algorithm which is really popular and uses what is known as gradient descent for optimization. So remember, how does it work? Before I go through the motions and show you the algorithm, the idea is very simple. The idea is that how do you learn in a neural network? We have a neural network with random parameters, a huge neural network with random parameters. We give an input and then using back propagation, we learn from that particular, we learn that particular task. So you are learning again a function using gradient descent. Suppose you have a lot of meta training data. That means a lot of old experience and you are generalizing this particular neural network to give you more and more updated and generalized F theta. So this theta, which are the parameters of this neural network have been generalized. Now you are given an instance which you have not seen before, some Liger or some Mobike if you have learned how to ride a bicycle. Then we say that what we can do is we can use optimization we can say in which direction the gradient is going. So suppose what is the gradient? Suppose we give an input, you get some error. When you give, get some error, you find out the derivative of the error with respect to the parameters. That is the gradient. This is what is known as back propagation. So you learn the gradient. Now you know that the new task, the first thing that we say, okay, it is not the old, my old experience. It is it is different and it is in this direction it is different. So you find out the gradient. You get the next instance. So you know, don't update it. You see your original cycle. Okay, this instance is in this direction different. So you find out how your new data instances differ from the old learned network and then do an averaging across all the gradients to give you an average. Okay, this is the general direction in which the new data is. So this is what is known as 
I'll just show you and then I'll come back and teach you. This is what is known as model agnostic meta learning. And I'll show you a figure very interesting. Let's see this figure. So as you can see in the uh, figure, the theta is the meta training and which you have learned from the old task. When you come to the red circle, you say, okay, I give the first instance of the new task, which you have not seen. So there the loss goes into the direction delta, delta uh, the gradient of the loss is gradient L1, L sub 1. Then you take the second data of the only K data or three data instances that you have in this figure. So it moves, the theta actually moves to <coughs> gradient of L2, which is a partial gradient. Then you don't know anything. You When you give the third one, it moves into this direction. So you have the loss in three directions from three different data instances of the new data instances the gradient L1, gradient L2, and the gradient L3. You find out the average, so your theta now is modified to the arrow which is seen. And when you now, you know that this particular theta star that you have got is the new modified meta parameter, theta star. Now, for some tasks specific, Suppose you have to a task F1, then you can learn task specific parameters phi1, phi2, phi3. So depending on, so with each new instance, we are retraining the neural network to move in the average or the general direction of the new set of tasks. And hence we are learning. And then for task specific learning, uh, from the generalization, then we can find out in which direction phi i is. So as you can see this optimization, look at the inside. The inside L is finding is training theta with the new first data instances to get delta L1. Now this particular thing is retrained with the new task, task i and the task I learns to give you delta L1. Then again it is learned to give you delta L2. Again the same neural network is done. No updation is done because theta is not changed. New, no updation is done and we learn th delta 3. Hence it's actually learned, it's, it's a gradient, it's gradient of gradient. Because you have gradient of the inner loop, you have trained the neural network using the gradient back propagation. Once it is learned, for new data, you need to again find out the gradient of the previous loss. So in fact, you need to find out the second gradient or what is known as the second derivative and to find out the Hessian. And different variations of this particular algorithm has come friends. The main interesting thing is as of this particular algorithm is that this does not assume any parameters. So it is not specific to the task, not specific to the model. And whether you are training for images or training for meta RL or training for language or training from skilling, you can use a huge neural network to learn anything. So this is what is known as model agnostic meta learning. And in this model agnostic data meta learning, friends, you are able to use a neural network, find out how, in which direction it deviates. The original learned network F theta deviates with each instance of the new task. Then find out what is the average so that you are able to generalize to the new set of tasks. And then you can spit out parameters which are task specific. And this can be done with any task. And this is what is known as model agnostic meta learning. Friends, uh, I tried to cover these two and you will see that the basic idea of this optimization based meta learning is to learn, make a network learn. That is one that maximizes the likelihood of the training data given the task specific data. And then once you have learned, that means as you can see first, I'll show you the figure first. We have F theta from meta learning data set, and then you learn 
from the first what is the likelihood delta uh, uh, l1 that means what direction is the network deviating for the first task new task second task third task so what will be the generalization which will be an average of you move in the average direction and then if you want to adapt or be specific to a particular task then you can find out task specific parameters 5 1 5 2 5 3 and this is how we keep on learning and this particular uh, mammal model as we already know can be applied to any area and if you see there have been a deluge a plethora of papers in this direction right from cvpr to the industry to icml you will find four or five research papers which are in this particular direction and this has really propelled meta learning into a new direction so how is it different from black box instead of using an amortized black box approach we use an optimization optimization thus means since everything is differentiable we are assuming it's a gradient based optimization you sample task you make the network learn then optimize the network for new tasks find find phi i how it is different from theta in which direction you move theta parameters so that you can deviate and learn new parameters phi i from the old networks and then you update the meta parameters to find out theta star and as i told you it involves second derivatives so this is the algorithm so you sample for tasks for each task you make the network learn and find out the k directions in which the loss delta l1 l2 move move in the general direction and update theta and finally find out the task specific parameters phi i for each specific task so if you are going to model it and implement it as a neural network then it will be a convolutional neural network which will have an inner loop which will update theta and which will have an outer loop which will update phi so initially we find we train the inner loop with meta training data and then once it is trained then we give an instance of the new data that means data we have not seen update the inner loop once again so that it gives zero loss a very low loss for the new data as soon as we do it then we give the second data and then this leads to the updation of the parameters theta which is meta parameters and incorporates the new task and we also can have the phi's which are task specific data for new data which we have already we have not seen so we in the black box we use a memory a content addressable memory saying that everything is are stored in our mind as experience and the optimization says we model we have f theta and when we see a new task try to move towards that new task and this leads to an optimization friends i'll stop here but before i stop let me make some observations the idea is that this meta learning either content based or black box based meta learning or this meta learning using optimization based meta learning is perhaps not the way we human or we humans learn from our experience perhaps and most probably we know that our brain actually works in an entirely different way our brain the working of our brain is entirely different the working of our brain is something which is entirely different and we 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 are able to we are able to not only learn in a different manner but also learn very quickly our adaptation rate is very very high our way in which we adapt to tasks store previous experience is entirely different and perhaps one day we'll be able to know how our brain works but till then we are rely only on mathematical constructs which we have learned over a period of time and we try to use and meta train our mathematical frameworks to adapt to new types of learning and teaching paradigms with this friends my i 
I rest my oars. Thank you so much for giving me opportunity for speaking on this August forum. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you, sir. Sir, we have three questions from the attendees. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, yeah, the first question is, what is the difference between meta learning and transfer learning? Okay, so uh, today meta learning is a superset of transfer learning. And in transfer learning, you take a task, you learn a task and then the task is over and then you transfer your knowledge to the new task. And meta learning, as you can see, while we were learning the new task, we were also updating the old task as well. So in meta learning, the things go in, in a concurrent fashion. We are also updating the param meta parameters of the old tasks, which we have generalized. So there's a slight difference. But having said this, as I told you in the beginning, the vocabulary is still fuzzy. The vocabulary is still evolving. And auto ML, transfer learning, meta learning, is still not crystallized. One uses one for another and still hazy. Yes, ma'am. And the next question is, which is the which is preferred for what applications? Like the meta learning and the transfer learning? So usually uh, the transfer learning is cut and dried. However, meta learning has come to the fore because if you even in our own lives, when we see, if when we learn how to ride a mobile, we also learn how to ride a bike better. So when we learn how to negotiate traffic in a car, we also learn how to negotiate, or already learned how to negotiate traffic with a mobile. So we know that every new experience is updates our old knowledge also. And hence, meta learning is perhaps the way, way forward and not transfer learning. Okay. We have in transfer last... learning. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, 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 sir. Please continue, sir. Then I'll, uh, the idea is that the, in meta learning, we are updating our old, old parameters. And this is perhaps the way human beings learn. We always improve our old tasks also when we new, uh, see our new task. So new task updates our ability to perform old tasks better. So, and in transfer learning paradigms which are already available, uh, usually the old task parameters are not changed because it's jumping sequentially from one to another. Again, the vocabulary is still evolving. We are still fuzzy and hazy on this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. The last question. Sir, would you please brief the amalgamation of cybersecurity and meta learning algorithms? See, uh, I am from basically uh, I work in both the areas and then let me tell you how are we really trying to amalgamate meta learning with cyber security. See what happens especially in cyber security if you look at any of the attacks most of the attacks are through the operating system and it's a zero day attack it means that we have not seen the attack before number one and we are not in a position to visualize that attack number one first problem. Second is that the attack is usually on the control system. And it, some vulnerability of the control system of the of the of the of the uh, cyber physical system in question is actually attacked. If you look at the uh, the problem, what is people are trying to do is and when we uh, see the movies like Zoom, so people are attacking the traffic light and trying to monitor the and try to control the traffic light. How do they control the traffic light? They enter through the operating system using a zero day or a exploit, enter and modify the control system. So it's a genuine modification to the control system. Meta, and how can we overcome this? We can overcome this by formal verification of the system, which is impossible to do. And hence, meta training can tell us that what if you are learned that this is the way in which control system of a particular water network or a traffic network has been attacked. Probably tomorrow we will see somebody try, try, tries to use the same line of attack for a similar line of attack to compromise our defense network. Then probably meta learning can be used to find that line of attack and plug in any vulnerability that we have. So this is one area in which, uh, which, which meta learning 
people are trying to apply and we are also trying to apply not only trying to apply we have a project on this and then learning fake news so if fake news becomes a cyber threat then we can recognize fake uh, fake news by finding out what are the change in parameters people have made to transfer a new news or a, uh, a true news into a fake news probably i'm just thinking loudly probably that can be one area in which meta learning can be of use yes ma'am yes sir i think we are done with all the questions sir thank you for accepting thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank you for giving me this opportunity yes thank sir. you ma'am i love the feedback thank you ma'am thank you so yeah. much thank you have sir. a nice day thank you ma'am bye thank you thank you for work. giving me this opportunity yes thank you ma'am i love the feedback thank you ma'am thank you so yeah. much thank you have a nice day thank you ma'am bye